welcome. The news says closely 90 killed in recent Israeli airstrike on Jabalia. Jimmy Lai trial starts in Hong Kong. UK rather calls for release. Chile rejects conservative constitution. North Korea launch ICBM with range to strike entire U.S. and Serbia's CSNS leads in snap polls. On Israel-Palestine conflict, no less than 90 people have been killed and over 100 wounded in the newest Israeli attacks on the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza. Sunday's strikes hit a residential block belonging to the al Barsh and al Wan families in the town of Jabalia. The enclave's health ministry said, according to report, women and children were among the dead, with those in still missing, Wafa said in its report. The first respondents and locals were searching for the wounded and more bodies were believed to be under the rubble. Numerous of those injured, including children, were taken to nearby medical centers, which are already overwhelmed with patients. The son of Dawood Shihab, the spokesman for the Palestinian Islamic Jihad group, was among the dead. An official from the Gold said, according to report, medics in central Gaza's Dir al Bala said at least 12 Palestinians were killed and several injured, while in Rafa in the south, an Israeli air attack on a house left at least four people dead. Around 19,000 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza since October 7th. Israel says 1,147 people were killed on its own territory that very day. Meanwhile, Israel has also increased its artillery shelling in southern Gaza, hitting the cities of Kanyonis and Rafah, where the majority of displaced Palestinians are sheltering. The stepping up of bombardments in the south has deepened the humanitarian crisis, with starving people scouting for food and water, grabbing them from aid trucks in desperation. On Sunday, Israel said it will reopen the Karim Abu Salem crossing in the east, but it is not clear whether supplies have crossed through near yet. The United Nations estimates that 1.9 million people, about 80% of Gaza's population, have been displaced by the war so far. Felipe Lazzarini, the head of the United Nations Agency of the, for the Palestinian Refugees, UNRW, said, I will not be surprised if people start dying of hunger or a combination of hunger disease, weak immunity. On judicial matters, Hong Kong media tycoon Jimmy Lai has gone on trial for alleged national security offenses hours after the United Kingdom joint calls for his quick release. Since December 2020, Lai, who has been in prison, arrived in court at 10 o'clock a.m. local time where he is charged with conspiring to conspire with foreign powers under the national security law enforced on the territory by China in June 2020. The publisher of the now defunct Apple Daily is one of China's most vocal critics and was arrested initially in August 2020 as police raided the newspaper's offices. The trial was supposed to have begun a year ago but was delayed after the government challenged his choice of defense counsel, Timothy Owen, a UK-based lawyer, and sought Beijing's intervention. Lie on the Apple Daily also faced charges under a sedition law dating from the British colonial era. He has pleaded not guilty to all charges. United Kingdom Foreign Secretary David Cameron in a statement late on Sunday said he was gravely concerned about the trial and joined the United States and European Union in calling for Lai's immediately release. Lai is a British citizen. As a prominent and outspoken journalist and publisher, Jim Lai has been targeted in a clear attempt to stop the peaceful exercise of his rights to freedom of expression and association, Cameron said, noting that the security law was in breach of the commitments made to Hong Kong when it resumed sovereignty over the territory in 1997. I urged the Chinese authorities to repeal the national security law and end the prosecution of all individuals charged under it. I call on the Hong Kong authorities to end their prosecution and release Jimmy Lai immediately. Now, Chile has voted to discard a new conservative constitution, leaving the text drafted during the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet in force. With closely all of the ballots tallied on Sunday night, over 55% of Chileans voted against the text, compared with about 44% in favor. The proposed constitution, which was drafted by a committee dominated by the Conservative Republican Party, 
will have reinforced property rights and free market principles and included limits on immigration and abortion. The result comes over a year after Chileans roundly rejected a progressive constitution that will have classified the Latin American country as a plurinational state, established autonomous indigenous territories, and elevated the environment as well as gender equity. Chile's leftist president, Gabriel Boric, who before the vote vowed to emphasize on long-term development in favor of further efforts to change the constitution, said the results showed that the country had become polarized and divided. Jose Antonio Cast, Republican Party leader, expressed disappointment over the result. We failed in the efforts to convince Chileans that this will be a better constitution than the existing one, he said. The push to replace the present constitution adopted during Pinochet's military dictatorship was set in motion after as many as one million protesters took to the streets in 2019, demanding sweeping political and social change. While Chile is one of the richest and most stable countries in Latin America, it has some of the highest levels of wealth inequality in the developed world. In a 2020 referendum, 80% of Chileans voted to replace the Pinochet-era constitution, which was widely blamed for allowing companies and the elites to enrich themselves at the expense of the poor working classes. But the public's enthusiasm for change waned in the years following the protests as issues such as crime, the COVID-19 pandemic and inflation took center stage. Opinion polls in the weeks leading up to the latest vote had predicted defeat. On Monday morning, North Korea test fires possible intercontinental ballistic diesel ICBM in what analysts said showing the increasing reliability of the reclusive state illegal weapons program. The missile launch Monday exhibited the range to heat anywhere in the United States, according to a preliminary assessment from the Japanese Defense Ministry. The ICBM class ballistic missile launched this time, if calculated based on the trajectory, depending on weight of warhead, could have a flying range of over 150 kilometers, 9,320 9, miles, meaning the whole of the U.S. territory will be within range, Shingo Miyaki, Parliamentary Vice Minister of Defense said, according to a report in Tokyo. Japanese authorities reported the missile flew at a highly lofted trajectory of about 73 minutes and to an altitude of 6,000 kilometers, that's 3,700 miles, and a distance of about 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles, before falling to the sea west of the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. If we'll need to be fired at a flatter trajectory to hit the United States, and that's an ability Pyongyang has yet to prove, according to Joseph Damsey, research associate for defense and military analysis at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. While lofted tests can provide assurances of full engine burns and staging, they do not represent the same challenges of a normal ICBM trajectory. This includes the ability of the warhead to survive a prolonged shallow re-entry into the atmosphere or its accuracy over much longer distances, Damsey said according to report. While the type of missile fired was not reported, Jeffrey Lewis, a professor at the James Martin Center for Non-Proliferation Studies at the Middlebury in Institute of International Studies, said Monday's test was likely the third of the Hong Kong 18 missile a powerful solid fuel fueled ICBM North Korea also launched in April and July. It shows a maturing North Korean missile program, according to Lewis. Kim said that after the April test that the Hong Kong 18 will provide the country with a powerful strategic attack means and boost its nuclear capabilities. On elections, exit polls say the ruling wing Serbian Progressive Party, SNS, of the President Aleksandr Vucic is in the lead in a snap parliamentary election widely regarded as a referendum on his government on Sunday evening, according to projections by the pollsters. It said, and CISD and CNS won 47% of the vote and is expected to hold about 130 seats in the 250 member assembly. The major opposition, Serbia Against Violence, SPN Alliance, a centrist coalition vying to unseat the populists who have ruled the Balkan state since 2012, won about 23% of votes, said the projections. 
The projections are based on a partial count of representative sample of polling stations. Official results are set to be announced late on Monday. The election did not include the presidency, but governing authorities backed by the dominant pro-government media have run the campaign as a referendum on Vucic. Two mass shootings in May, resulting in 18 deaths, including nine elementary school students, led to protests that shook Vucic and the SNS decade-long grip on power. The discontent was made worse by growing inflation, which hit 8% in November. Opposition parties and rights watchdogs also accused Vucic and the SNS of bribing voters, stifling media freedom, violence against opponents, corruption and ties with organized crime. Vucic and his allies deny all the allegations. A more story is northeastern Australia floods prompt evacuations. In northeastern Australia, hundreds of people have been evacuated after severe floods cut off towns and forced residents to flee to rooftops to escape rising waters. Over 300 people were rescued in the state of Queensland overnight with military helicopters deployed to assist areas cut off by the floods, officials said on Monday. Cairns, a popular tourist destination that serves as a gateway to the Great Barrier Reef, has been almost completely cut off by flood waters and May first, the town's 160,000 residents will soon not have access to clean drinking water. Local officials said the town had received about 600 millimeters of rain over 40 hours through early Monday morning, more than three times the December average. All flights into and out of Cairns airports where plans have been partially submerged by flood waters were cancelled or postponed on Monday. According to authorities, over 14,000 properties across the region are without power. In Wujal Wujal, a rural community in the Cape York region, nine people, including a seven-year-old boy, sought shelter on the roof of a hospital. Crocodiles have been spotted swimming in flood waters in numerous rural areas, including Wujal Wujal and Ingham. The flooding follows heavy rains and strong winds brought on by tropical cyclone Jasper, which made landfall in Australia last week. Queensland State Premier Stephen Miles said the flooding was the worst natural disaster he had ever seen in the state. Queensland Treasurer Cameron D has warned that the disaster will have a billion dollar impact on the state. Weather officials have forecast more rain on Monday as Jasper is expected to linger over the region. Anthony Albanese, Prime Minister, said that Australian military had been put on standby for rescue and relief efforts. In Africa, over 60 drowned in Libya shipwrecks, says United Nations. Off the coast of Libya, almost 61 migrants, including women and children, have drowned following a tragic shipwreck, said the United Nations International Organization for Migration, IOM. The IOM's Libya office said in a post on X citing survival accounts that the boat had left the coastal city of Zuwara, situated west of the capital Tripoli and 60 kilometers 37 miles from the Tunisian border with around 86 people on board. The central Mediterranean continues to be one of the world's most dangerous migration routes, the United Nations agency said in the post. Libya is a key transit point along the central Mediterranean route. Each year, tens of thousands of people pour across Libya's border. Tragedies at sea are not rare, as many flee conflicts seeking better lives. According to latest figures released by the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, over 2,500 people have died or got missing this year alone in the central Mediterranean, and numerous in other parts of the world are likely to be very high. A boat carrying dozens of migrants trying to reach Europe capsized off the coast of Libya, leaving more than 60 people dead, including women and children, the UN Migration Agency had said. Libya has in recent years emerged as the dominant transit points for migrants fleeing war and poverty in Africa and the Middle East, ever, ever though the North African nation has plunged into chaos following a nato back uprising that toppled and killed longtime autocrats Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. More than 2,250 people died on the Central European route this year, according to Flavio Di Giacomo, an IOM spokesperson. It's a dramatic figure which demonstrates rather that unfortunately not enough is being done to save lives at sea, Di Giacomo wrote on X. 
According to the IMO Movement's Meeting Migrants Project, at least 940 migrants were reported dead and 1,348 missing off Libya between January and November 18th. The project, which tracks migration movement, said about 14,900 migrants, including over 1,000 women and more than 530 children, were intercepted and returned to Libya this year. The project reported 529 dead and 848 missing off Libya in 2022. More than 24,600 were intercepted. And return to Libya. Let's take a quick break and when we come back I'll bring you more stories. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Stories from Nigeria now says on political matters, rivers crisis, Amwa Hule led lawmakers challenge Fubara, a factional speaker of the River State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Martin Chike Amwa Hule, has said that 27 lawmakers that defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Congress, APC, because of the chaos rocking the state chapter of the PDP. He also said they left their former party because President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was doing very well with the appointments of Rivers indigents into numerous positions, adding that the four-man group led by another factional speaker, Right Honorable Edison Ehi, cannot form a quorum describing their legislative actions in the name of the Assembly as a nullity that can't stand in the eye of the law. The state APC caretaker committee chairman, Tony Okocha, also in his remarks, said the party was now in majority in the state legislature and would support and defend its members against the antics of the PDP government. Salihu Mohamed Lukman, the immediate past APC national vice chairman Northwest, in all of this has called for caution on the political crisis in the state. Speaking on Sunday in Abuja, Lukman said it was unfortunate that democracy has now taken flight in the state and politicians were behaving like persons without civilization. He also expressed sadness that politicians were already thinking of the 2027 elections instead of concentrating on delivering dividends of democracy to the people. Now, NLC rejects nationwide strike notice. The Nigeria Labour Congress NLC has sacked a notice of nationwide strike allegedly planned for Monday. In a statement on Sunday in Abuja, Benson Upa, NLC Head of Information and Public Affairs, said this. There was a statement purportedly signed by the General Secretary of NLC and Secretary General of TUC, Emmanuel Ukboja and Nuhu Toru, respectively, that a nationwide strike will commence on Monday. According to Upa, the statement is fake news and there is no notice of strike from us. We want to reassure Nigerians that this notice did not emanate from us and neither do we have any intention of initiating any strike action this period, he said. He said concerned Nigerians were advised to ignore the notice and treat it as fake. And finally on the news, uh, Christmas shoppers lament Naira shortage. Shoppers have condemned the deteriorating Naira scarcity about a week to Christmas Day with numerous of them expressing frustrations over their inability to make vital purchases for the Yuletide celebration. Reports on Sunday showed that banks were still rationing cash over the counter, while several automated teller machines ATM visitors did not dispense cash. According to reports from ATM galleries in Lagos, Abuja, Oshobo, Makordi, Sokoto, Edo and Guso, amongst others, observed that several of the machines had run out of cash. Many bank customers could not get access to cash OTC in many banking halls across the country on Friday. This was in spite of assurances from the banking regulator, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, that more cash had been released for economic activities. However, over the weekend, report revealed that many poultry sellers and local stores were insisting on cash as a means of payment for their goods. Again, the cash crunch made points of sale operators add their service charge fee by at least 100%. Findings showed that 200 naira was collected as a service charge for withdrawals of 5,000 naira and below, 4,000 naira for 10,000 naira, 800 naira for 20,000 naira, 1,300 naira for 30,000 naira, and so on. 
At the World Bank Nigeria Development Update December 2023 edition, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Yemi Cardoso, said that the prevailing cash scarcity was a result of the poor implementation of the Naira redesign policy, which had resulted in hoarding by some Nigerians. Acknowledging the obvious flaws in various CBN procedures, the CBN boss announced a comprehensive review initiative. A recap of major stories says closely 90 killed in recent Israeli airstrike on Jabalia. Jimmy Lai trial starts in Hong Kong. UK calls for release. Chile rejects conservative constitution. North Korea launched ICBM with range to strike entire United States and Serbia's SNS leads in snap polls. And that's all on the news. Thanks for watching. I am Lois Drake.